Mimer. Um, before we get into chapter 6, we have one footnote in chapter 5. And just to summarize again what we said in chapter 5, we need a little to clarify it. So in chapter 5, we spoke about the three elements of Edus, Chokim, and Mishpatim. The idea that Edus, the testimonies, Chokim, the statutes, the mitzvahs that we don't understand, and Mishpatim, the mitzvahs that are rational that we do understand. And we spoke about the, the, what, there's, the, 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 what they access in the spiritual realms, let's put it in that sense, or what, what the corresponding divine energies. So we said that Eidos is Atmos. Eidos, testifying, test, a testament to God, that is God's will as it is His will. And so that, um, that accesses Atmos, the essence of God that's undefinable, that's unknowable, that can't even be defined in the negative. Eidos bears witness to God's will. Chukim, Chukim are uh, uh, the level of Sevev Klam, transcendent of reality. When you think of God as creator, he's beyond reality, so that sub, that's, that's, uh, subdues um, nature because it's, uh, you realize that there's something far beyond and greater. And that's something that you can't really fully comprehend. We as finite individuals can't, uh, can't, can't comprehend infinity, but we can understand what it isn't. So there already there's some kind of a connection there's some kind of, even if it's in a negative way, there's some type of definition as it relates to chukim, as it relates to breaking um, nature. Then we have mishpatim, which are the rational mitzvahs, the ones that we understand, and that's Ayur Mamala, the imminent light of God, the one that's perceptible and, and understandable. In, again, what that means to be able to understand, comprehend godliness, even Ayur Mamala, but that, that's knowable from within uh, the natural order. So that's the imminent light of God that's present, that's within, that animates all of creation. So there's the light that animates creation, Mamala Kalaman, and that is accessed through um, Mishpatim, the rational understanding, uh, the, the laws that, that appeal to our own human sensibilities. Then there's Chukim, which represents Eir HaSevev, Sevev Kalaman, the transcendent light, the one that, and that's why Chukim are the mitzvahs that we don't understand, which subdues us, that humbles us, that there's something beyond our comprehension. And then there's Eidos, the testimonies that bear testimony, uh, 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 that testify to God as he's at in, uh, in his essence, which is beyond any kind of description and definition. Now, remember, we discussed the fact in the beginning of last class that we also said so we have these three categories, but we also have two categories. There's the idea that mitzvahs, every mitzvah is the will of Hashem, and that every mitzvah has a specific intention, a specific purpose. So, we, so in chapter 5, we uh, clarified... The, the difference then between Eidos and, Mish- and Chokim. Because <clears throat> ultimately, Chokim, when you perform a mitzvah that you don't understand, so ultimately, what, what, is, what do you feel at that, in, in that, in that uh, observance? You feel the fact that you're fulfilling God's will. Because you don't understand it. So it's not so relatable to you. So what does it mean that ultimately in Chokim, that they're different than, Mish- than Eidos? Eidos, is, that's what God wants. That's, that's His will. And so therefore, we feel that we said that's, that, that accesses or well, that represents um, atzmus. But chukim, that chuk, what, what, what's wrong with chukim? What's deficient in chukim that we also need Eidus? Why is chukim not sufficient enough also for atzmus? And that, in the sense that chukim, um, uh, we feel God's will. So ultimately in chapter 5, what the Rebbe explains is that, that, that chukim, so he discusses the idea of chuk. The idea of chayk from the word chakika to engrave. And we said chakika is in, in the Hasidic terminology from the Maimir the Friedrich Rebbe that represents keser. The point he makes is that even when there's an engraving, true that when we're, where there's engraving, there's nothing else. It's within a stone. But ultimately, the stone is lacking as a result of it. Number one, the stone itself um, um, is, is, takes on a certain form, so a certain definition that it didn't have before based on the engraving, the writing that's in it. And also, that when, when you engrave in the stone, the stone loses its, its light. It's not, it's not, as, it's not as bright. It's, it's a consumer, or I'm sorry, that's part of the first one. But also that, that you're missing from the stone. There's actually less. The stone is lessened as a result. You take away from the stone, that's the engraving is to remove from the stone. Now so the same is true. It looks better. Maybe it looks no. better. But, but, it's, it's, but it's missing. And now there's less stone. When you polish the stone, you're polishing uh, no yeah. Oh. yeah. Here we're talking about engraving. The same. You are, uh, you are uh, taking off half the stone, but now the stone is worth ten times the price. Right. This is that's this is uh, for profession. Same thing. <clears throat> but ultimately, the, when we talk about engraving, so number one, the stone is now defined. It's a certain cut. Take a diamond, for instance. You cut it. Now it's that's the cut. Before that, it doesn't have any cut. It could be any cut. Nothing. But 
it, in a, it's, it's pure potential. Now it already, in a sense, you're right. But ultimately, now the stone has a specific cut, a certain definition. So it's not, it's not beyond definition. And also, you're ultimately taking away. There's less to the stone. Obviously, there's an advantage also to hook him. We need to have... Well, if you don't do a good job, then, then you did. It's the point is that, that when we're talking about engraving, you write, in, write, write into something, you, write, you engrave into it, so you now you have less of it. So the same is true with regard to chukim, that when we talk about save of Kalam, we're talking about, in, now we're talking about a level of godliness that's definable, in a sense, so already it's not, it can't be atzmos. And furthermore, with regard to God's essence, the, the world is non-existent. It doesn't conceal God's essence in any way, shape, or form. Whereas, when we talk about Seyv of Kalam and the fact that God comes to be, that makes this move to create, this movement to create, even though he transcend, transcends it, even though it's in, he's still infinite, there's the infinite light of God, but the fact that there's a possibility for a world, the whole idea of the world is concealment of godliness. So it already it gives potential for there to, something to conceal godliness. An Atmos can't conceal Atmos, his essence. It's only a Chukim. So therefore we see how, so, so then when we get back to doing a mitzvah, so when we're talking about feeling Ratzin Hashem, the will of Hashem, that's present really only in Atzmus, in, in uh, Edus. But Chukim and Mishpatim, both, the rational and the non-rational, both of them would fit into the second category of the specific, the specific definition, the specific effect of each mitzvah. And we're going to get to chapter, in note 42, we'll clarify that last point a little bit more. And in the next chapter, as we talk about it as it is within the observance of every single mitzvah, it'll be a little bit more clarified. Let's take a look at, at note 42. So the Rebbe says here in chapter 5, that when we when that that the mitzvahs of chukim, the whole idea is that it, it negates intellect, so it, it it subdues the person. We already learned earlier that that idea of, of chukim is that there's a specific. What's the specific intention in chukim? Is that it, that it breaks it, it breaks the it, it causes a, um, um, submission and, and subduing the person. It breaks the, the the ego in a sense because it's beyond understanding. So here we're saying that when it comes to to chukim. Right, you're doing something that goes against. In a, I'm sorry, there's the, the um, that he says inside that when you do a mitzvah that you don't understand, so you're, the will of Hashem kind of goes against your own sensibilities. I, I'm a rational person that wants to understand everything. I'm doing something I don't understand, so it goes against. I, the person can make an argument against chokim, and yet he fulfills it anyway. So it's it's negating his own sensibilities. Let's look at note forty-two. Lahoyim I say from mitzvahs la'atzamach tzedek shemevi shamashikasav rambam. The Rambam says, he asks a question. It says, uh, the Chazal say that a person has to say, I really want to commit the sin. But what should I do? God doesn't, doesn't let me, uh, I, God prevents me from, from committing the sin. That's, the, that's what a person has to say. So Rambam asks, the Apostle initially says, Nefesh Rasha Ivsara. That a that the, the, the soul of a of a wicked person desires bad, meaning that if something is bad that a person desires, if you desire bad, not only not if you commit bad, but if you desire something bad, so that's that make that that itself says something about your character that makes a person a bad person. The meaning of So how could it be then that a person should say, I I want to commit a sin? But God doesn't let me. If you want to commit the sin, so what does that say about you? Right? So the Ramam explains that, that when, when do we say that you have to say Efshi only in the non-rational mitzvahs? Like shatnas. You could say, I want to wear shatnas. It's a beautiful jacket. But the says it doesn't let me. So there already, that doesn't say anything about the... That, that's not your sensibles. But if you say, I want to steal, but God doesn't let me, so that makes you a thief. <laughs> you want to commit a murder, but, you, but God doesn't let you, so that's, you're, you're a murderer. So here... That's what the Rambam says. So, so the Tzemach Tzedek explains in Sefer Mitzvahs that Sefer Mitzvahs Sham Bezoyis Shaimer Efshi Harei Urachik Moed Melikos. Why is it that a person should say, "I I want to commit the sin, but God doesn't let me commit a sin"? So, okay. So the Rambam talks about that doesn't reflect necessarily on the person's character because we're talking about the non-rational ones. But then, why is it necessary to say, "Don't say anything"? No, you have to say, "I want to, but God doesn't let me." Why? Because in that sense, what happens is that reveals your true character, that you're really distant from godliness. If God says not to wear shotness, then you really have no business wanting to wear shotness. The fact that you want to wear shotness shows the distance between you and the will of Hashem. How not aligned you are with the will of Hashem. So it shows on the distance. So again, we see that, that chukim, when it comes to the mitzvahs that are non-rational, that causes a person to feel that distance. It causes a, 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 a bitl, 
a submission of of of, of the person. So the the point is that when it comes to to edus chukim and mishpatim, these three these three categories of mitzvahs, we can divide them into two. Edus is in its own category, and chukim and mishpatim are in the second. After chapter five, we we clarify this idea: why are chukim and mishpatim in their own category? We'll again we'll explain in a different in a different uh, from a different angle in chapter six. Um, but the the point is that edus is God's will as it's God's will, without any other agenda. That's what God wants. Chukim and Mishpatim have some type of um, effect or impact, or the, 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 the purpose is the impact it has on an individual, either in a positive way through Mishpatim, or in a negative way through Chukim. Either way, the, 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 the main point here is the person, the individual. Now let's read chapter 6, and again, we'll, we'll further elaborate on this point. So chapter 6. That just as we, we said above, that with regard to Eidus Chukim Mishpatim, that Chukim and Mishpatim are in a category of of Eir, which is connected to to reality, which is Eir Amamale, which is imminent in creation, or Eir Asev, which is as it transcends creation. But either way, it's connected to 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 creation. It's just that Elisha Mishpatim Hemba Eir Amislabish Ba'el Mismal Chukim Huba Hemba Eir Shalomal Mislabsha Seviv. Right. So that's the difference. Mishpatim are in the, the imminent. Aspect of godliness as it's present within creation. Chukim as it transcends the edus. Same ba'atzmus and sef shalom alim shachz alim is an edus. The testimonies that is atzmus, um, the essence of Hashem. That's beyond being connected positively or negatively to the world. So al derech zehu gam ba'vei zadim. The same is true with regard to a person's fulfillment of the mitzvahs. The chukim u'mishpatim heim ba'aseichol sheba adam. When we talk about chukim and mishpatim, again, here we also divide them in the same way. Chukim and mishpatim in one category, and edus in another, because chukim and mishpatim are in the category of a person's intellect. Or at least in regard to the elements of the neshama that are connected to seichel, where we find the chukim, which is his bonanus, the idea of his bonanus, of contemplation, of reflection. And in a moment, we'll get into the brackets. We'll explain what, what the difference is, though, between Chukim and Eid and Mishpatim in regard to his bonus. But the point he wants to make, let's first skip that a second. Um, the Indian Eidus, yeah, let's skip down to two lines from the bottom there. The Indian Eidus Uba Adam Atzmai. Chukim and Mishpatim are in, a per, with, with regard to the person, his, <clears throat> his bonus, his intellect, either the way he understands in the positive or in the negative. But we'll get into it in a moment. We'll go back and, and read that. And Eidos is a separate category. Eidos is the person himself. What that means, we'll, we'll get to soon. <clears throat> so what's the di- so? But the point is that Chukim and Mishpatim all are related to the to the individual and his his stature, his mitzias, his form, his shape. Whereas Eidos is in the essence of the person. So just as Eidos accesses the essence of Hashem as is beyond definition and description and comprehension, and Chukim and Mishpatim are Eir, as it's connected to Eilamis, Eir Asev, Eir Mamali, either way, it's something as God now is, is it takes on some kind of a knowable form. <clears throat> Same is true with regard to Eidus Chukim and Mishpatim within a person, and again, here we're, we're going to, in a moment, we're going to, we'll talk about the idea of Eidus Chukim and Mishpatim as they are within every single mitzvah. In other words, every mitzvah, there are three categories of mitzvahs. You can divide the mitzvahs in general to three categories. But then each mitzvah of all 613 mitzvahs have elements of all three. So there's three categories of mitzvahs, and then these three are not only categories, they're also elements within each mitzvah. We'll get into a moment. So the point is that chukim and mishpatim relate to the individual and his, his comprehension, his understanding. And so therefore, when a person engages in chukim and mishpatim, there's some type of a meditation, some type of a comprehension that's going on. Whereas edus is all about... The, it, that, that is the essence of the, of the individual himself when he performs it. Let's take a look in the brackets. What's the difference between um, what's the difference between and, um, between Chukim and Mishpatim in regards to the Hizbanunus, to the contemplation that the person has when he's fulfilling the mitzvah, so the intention within the mitzvah. In Mishpatim, when a person is fulfilling the rational mitzvahs, what is his contemplation then? Is he reflecting on the reason in the mitzvahs, the rationality of the mitzvah? And this is again an element within all mitzvahs. Even chukim, when a person fulfills chukim, mitzvahs that are non-rational, even there he has to think about the rationale in the mitzvah. So when a person fulfills a mitzvah, let's say like like uh, like not wearing shatnas, which we said is a chok, it's not rational. 
It's a non-rational mitzvah, mitzvah we don't understand. And yet, when a person does that mitzvah, he has to think about the fact that there's a reason for the mitzvah. So when a person's honoring his parents, he can think about why a person should be honoring his parents. But when a person is fulfilling a mitzvah that's non-rational, he has to recognize that there's a rationale even in, in, within God's wisdom. But it's just It's just that that wisdom It's just that the mitzvah, the reason for the mitzvah is, it remains in God's wisdom and hasn't come down into our comprehension, our human comprehension. And what's the, the element of chukim in the mitzvahs? The element of chukim is to recognize that every mitzvah is God's will beyond reason. This idea is something we'll, <coughs> idea we talked about when we learned the Torah about Ener Chanukah. If you remember, we discussed the fact that, that there's a, every mitzvah has a reason. There's a reason for every mitzvah. There's a rationale for every mitzvah. And in that moment, we discussed a little differently than we're talking about here. But the idea that to the Greek ideology, it was acceptable to submit to something that you didn't understand because there's a rationale behind it. So even they didn't really even object to doing a mitzvah that was non-rational, that wasn't comprehensible, comprehensible to the human intellect, because it's rational to suggest that, you're, that there's a limit to your intellect and there's something beyond your intellect. That also is a rational approach. So that rationality was fine. What did they object to? They objected to the fact that a Jew fulfills a mitzvah because it's God's will, beyond rationale. Just as within, our, uh, within an individual, ratzin, your will is beyond your reason. <clears throat> ratzin is higher than reason. And so when a person wants something, they originally you want it within your, re- your will, beyond reason. And so when a yid does a mitzvah, why does he fulfill a mitzvah? Because that's what God wants. Not, so they had no problem with fulfilling a mitzvah because that's what... God understands why. So I can do something. It's rational to say I'll do a mitzvah that I don't understand, but God has his reasons. So, it, and so I'm doing something that's really essentially rational. It's just that I don't understand it. But then when you say you're doing a mitzvah because it's God's will, here the rationale is out the window. It doesn't matter. It's beyond rationale. Even if it's not rational, you do it. So when a person fulfills a mitzvah, what's the element of mishpatim in mitzvahs? And this is true in all mitzvahs, even, even chukim, even in non-rational mitzvahs, even in shatnes, let's say, or para aduma. In those mitzvahs, a person has to think that there is a reason. Because really, as we'll read in a second, note 43, all mitzvahs, even the non-rational mitzvahs, have reasons. So what do you have to think? You have to think to yourself that there's a reason. I, I don't understand why should, what the problem with shatnes is. But God has his reasons. God's, God's chachma. Everything is, it, 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 God has a reason in His wisdom, but His wisdom obviously is beyond our, is beyond our comprehension. And so some mitzvahs didn't, He didn't lower that rationale down into, into a way for us to understand. But He has His reasons. So there's a rationale in, in the observance of even chukim as well. So that's what a person has to think even when he's fulfilling chukim. So there's the rationality within even the non rational mitzvahs. But then, there's the element of chokim, which is true in every mitzvah, even the rational ones. Even when you're, when you're honoring your parents, for instance. So obviously, on one hand, you have to, rec- you have to know why. Like we said, we quoted earlier from the Rambam. You can't say, Efshi, I, I want to I commit, uh, I want to steal, but God doesn't let me. No. You have to recognize why you shouldn't steal. But also, you have to recognize that why don't you steal? Because God doesn't want you to steal. So it's not that you should... So there's, you're working both of those elements. There's the element that... I don't want to steal. I understand why I shouldn't steal because that's something that's understandable. That's a rational mitzvah. But at the same time, there's an element of not fulfilling the, not committing the sin because God, because that's God's will, because God says not to. Now, what's the point? What's the point of, of saying that when you fulfill a mitzvah of chukim, you recognize that there's a reason as well, or not only a mitzvah of chukim, all mitzvahs. What's the idea that we say that that there's a reason for it? Again, remember, there's these two aspects. There's the idea of Ratzin and Hashem, God's will, which is beyond reason. And then there is the rationale. There's the way, the way it comes into Chachm, into God's wisdom. And then it, some mitzvahs even come down to our wisdom. We can understand the mitzvahs. Or they, 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 they appeal to our intellect. But why is it that in every mitzvah, even if a paraduma, you should say there's a reason for it? Why, why is that answer? You don't know the reason. So what's the difference if there is or isn't? So, so it's explained... The Rebbe doesn't talk about it here, but helps us understand this idea a little bit more. When we talk about Ratzin, will, and we've talked about this in many of the other Mamar we've been learning, the idea of Ratzin being higher than Chachma. Ratzin, will, is higher than intellect. It, 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 it's beyond intellect in the person. That's why your will is more powerful than your intellect. 
your, your, the, any rational argument. But when you want something, so the fact that you want something doesn't make that thing good or bad. In fact, you can want something that's actually very bad for you. And if I can convince you why that thing is bad for you, it's not going to change your will. Because your will is beyond intellect. The thing is, as rational human beings, we always seem to want, want to ration, rationalize and understand what it is, why it is that we want something. So we want something, and we come up with a reason why it's good, why we want it. Really, it exists beyond just what we, beyond what we understand. We want it as it is. So when we, when we look at a mitzvah, if you look at a mitzvah as, at chukim, as non-rational mitzvahs, and you say that there's no reason for it, so then you don't know if the thing is good or bad. God wants us to, uh, uh, not to wear shotness. Is wearing shotness good or bad? Or neither. Does, it's irrelevant, right? That's what He wants. But God wants us also to recognize that all the mitzvahs, what God wants is also good. God is tachlis atayv, He's the ultimate goodness, and therefore what He wants is also good. But that, that good or bad, that already exists on the level of intellect. So therefore every single mitzvah, it's, it's Hashem's will, but also it's, it, it also comes down to God's chachmah. Meaning that every single mitzvah is everything that God wants is good. Everything He doesn't want is bad. Some things we can understand why they're good or why they're bad, and other things we can't. But we have to know that if it's His will, it's also in His chachmah. So therefore it's important to know, even when you're fulfilling a, a non-rational mitzvah, so to say that you understand why it's good or bad, don't get ahead of yourself. You don't. It's not something we, we, that's comprehensible in, in, in human intellect. But the fact that we know, or we could reflect on the fact that God has a reason for it, so that already tells us that it's, that it's good or, you know, depending on whether it's a positive or a negative commandment, why? that the thing is good or bad. Why do we have God a reason for it? So that's what we're saying, because God wants us to also to understand and to come to know him in a way that these tachlas atayv, these ultimate course, goodness. Course, that as well. And we also have to recognize that, that when we do a mitzvah, it's the rest of Hashem. So every single mitzvah, no matter what the mitzvah is, we have these elements to it. And we actually have three elements. We'll get to Adas in a moment. We have three elements to our observance of every single mitzvah. It doesn't matter which category it could fit into. Every single mitzvah has three elements. There's the idea that there's a zbonus, there's a comprehension. You reflect on the idea that there's a reason. You understand. I do the mitzvah. I can appreciate the mitzvah. I appreciate the goodness of the mitzvah. That's the mishpatim aspect of every mitzvah. Then there's the idea that when I perform the mitzvah, I fulfill the mitzvah because that's God's will, because that's what He wants, beyond reason. That's His will. That's the chukim in the mitzvah. And then there's edus, the idea in, which is in the person himself, the observer of the mitzvah himself. I do it because, because I'm a yid, basically. We'll get to that in a moment. So the point is that, that edus, and, so in this sense though, this helps us also clarify this idea a little bit more, the distinction between chukim and edus, which we'll again revisit <laughs> soon as well. Mishpatim and Chukim involve his bananus. They involve contemplation. Thinking one thing or thinking the other. Either thinking a mitzvah, all mitzvahs are, are, have a reason, or thinking that all mitzvahs are God's will. Either way, it involves what's active here is the person. So when, in other words, when a person fulfills a mitzvah, who's the primary mover and shaker here? What's the primary, uh, who's taking up the most space in this observance of the mitzvah? So when it's Edus and Chukim, it's the individual. That the, that the mitzvah appeals to me, I understand it, or that the mitzvah subdues me, it humbles me. Either way, it's about me. The observance of the mitzvah is, is about me, about my, the impact it has on me, whether a positive effect, a negative effect, right? Either way, it has an effect on me. When we talk about edus here, it's not about me. It's about that's, the, that's what Hashem wants. So you fulfill the mitzvah because that's God's will. That, nothing, not that it has a positive effect to me, negative effect, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. So that's how we could def- divide these three elements of the mitzvahs and the three categories of mitzvahs into two. The idea of the nivra, the individual, and that's, and put it back in the terms from Isfa'e, from the previous chapter, in other words, where creation is significant in one form or another, or where, it, where it's not about creation, it's about God. Let's look at note 43. We said that the mitzvahs, even the mitzvahs of Chukim, even the non-rational mitzvahs, have a reason. So let's say, say the Rebbe says two, there are two points. It's Shnei and Yonah Bazar, not 43. Number one, Alev, Sheyesh Lem Tam B'Chachma Delamay, Loke B'Fnim. The first thing is, as we're saying here in, inside chapter 6, that the mitzvahs have a reason above in, in, in God's wisdom. And see, Rambam, Seyf Hilchus Me'ilah, V'achukim Eina Mitzvah She'ein Taim On Yodua. So the Rambam says the end of Hilchus uh, Me'ilah, that when we talk about Chukim, the laws that we don't understand, he says that the mitzvahs, that their, their, their reasoning is not known to us. He doesn't say that don't have a reason. 
She'en lam tam. He says that we don't know the reason. It's not known to us. Hainu shagam achukim yesh lam tam. They also have reason. El she'en time when you do it, it's not known. The fish alone nimshach misach on rome because why are they, the reasons not known? Because it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't. God didn't lower it down into an, a way for for the, for the creation to understand it. And the second element of that is she yesh lam mebeis she yesh lam inyanim bemitzvus duchukim she efshel avinim gam besechleinim. In addition to this idea, there's also there's the idea that chukim have a reason, but we don't understand the reason. It's uh, there's a reason in God's wis- in God's reasoning, God's rationale, in God's chachma. Then there's a second thing, which is even chukim mitzvahs don't understand. We should endeavor to understand them to whatever ability we can. As the Rambam says, the end of Hilchus in, in the end of Hilchus Tumura, Royal is binding by him. It's worth it's 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 worthy for one to reflect upon these mitzvahs on the chukim on the, the non-rational. And as, to whatever ability you have, to whatever extent you can rationalize them or understand them, you should do that. And we do this. The truth is, when we talk about chukim mitzvahs, we understand. You talk about, uh, let's say, taris uh, and And it's essentially a chayk. It's beyond understanding. And yet, there's certain things that we can understand about it. Talk about uh, uh, kosher, the laws of kosher. We, kosher is a chayk. What makes something kosher and not kosher is a chayk. And yet, we understand there's a lesson we can learn from split hooves, there's a lesson we learn from chewing cud, there's a lesson we learn from the type of, of birds that are kosher and not kosher. Is that the reason? No. The re- ultimately, it's mysterious. But we still have to endeavor to understand it, to rationalize it, to, for it to appeal to our understanding. But like we said, why is that necessary? Because then we know that it's inherently good. Okay. So that's with regard to Edis, to, to Chukim and Mishpatim, that they're, they, they involve his barnus, meaning they relate to the individual, to the person. And who's mostly focused, what's the focus here when a person's perfor- performing a mitzvah and focusing on those two elements of the mitzvah? The individual, the impact on the individual. But the Indian edus suba adam atzmei. But when we talk about that component of edus, of testimony, that's in the person himself. What does that mean? Kamesha Kosov, atam edai. The Navi says, atam edai, you are my witnesses. And like he says in, in, in the Zoyar, Ilan Inun Yisrael, that talks about that's just the, the, the existence of the Jew bears witness to God. Just this very existence. The Pirish Atem who Atem Ba'atzmachem. The meaning of Atem means you yourselves. The Kivan Shakal Echad. Misron Nishmasa Yichelik Alekami Mal Mamish. Since every single Jew has a soul that's a part of God. Vishay Yishan Nisham Misu Ba'atzmos. Ulamaylo Yesim Yashesh. There are mitzvahs. And since a Nishama. Its source is in the essence of Hashem. High, and which is higher than the source of Tayyar Mitzvahs. Like we know the Medrash, the famous Medrash, that it says. The Medr says, um, it says Bereshis, right? There are two, two beginnings. There's Yisrael and Raisa. I don't know which one comes first, Yidin or Torah. Which one's first? Meaning, what do you mean which one's first? I mean, which one's higher? Which one's rooted higher in the Abish there, in the essence of Hashem? So, he's, so the Medr finishes, it says, that when it says, Tzavaz B'nai Yisrael, that the, in the Torah it says, command the Jewish people. So I realize that the Jews come first. They're, they're rooted in a higher place than even Torah mitzvahs in, in the essence of Hashem. So, lachin etzim mitziusim di Yisrael mi'id al So therefore, their very essence, since the Yid is rooted in the essence of Hashem, so the very existence of Yid, even before there's Torah mitzvahs, even before there's the will of Hashem to do this or not to do that, there's already the Yid, meaning that the Yid himself testifies to Atmos. El ha'gili d'shay shan yisham wa yidah edis the mitzvahs. It's just that... Amen. It's just that this is revealed, this is this idea that a Yid testifies to Atmos is revealed through Torah Mitzvah. So a person just uh, walking, the, walking this earth and, and breathing and walking around already testifies to Atmos. But when is that, how is that revealed? It's only revealed though, ultimately it's exp- it, it finds expression through the observance of Mitzvahs. So when we, when we talk about for performing Mitzvahs, there are these two aspects here. There's the impact it has on, an, on the individual, and then there is the, the way it is merely God's will. So in a sense... When a yid does a mitzvah, you stop being on the street and put on film. Why is he putting on film? Put on film because he understands? No, he doesn't understand what the, the idea of Shibbat Alev Amoyach, he doesn't understand the reason for film. Is he putting on film, is, is it ca- causing him to be humbled and subdued? He's submitting himself to something higher than him. He's not thinking that whole process. He's put on film because he asked him to put on film. But why is he agreeing to put on film? Because he's a yid, and a yid puts on film. In a se- that, in a sense, is the component of the edus of mitzvahs. Of the, that it bears witness to atmos. A yid, a yid is a testament to, to, to God's essence because he comes from God's essence. How is that? How, how do you bear that out? That's bear, but born by the, through a yid doing a mitzvah and doing a mitzvah. Why? Because he's a yid. Since he's a yid and he's rooted in atzmos, so therefore he does what the Abraham wants. That reveals that deeper connection that actually precedes the mitzvah itself. 
So when the mitzvah is performed without any, without any calculation, without any meditation, reflection, not in the positive or the negative, the edus, the, the, not the chukim, not the mishpatim, but simply because that's, that's, that's what you do, that's what he does, so that bears witness to atzmas, that's, that accesses atzmas. Okay, chapter 7. You could say that the main aspect of the mitzvah, the primary aspect of each mitzvah, is the edus of the mitzvah. The idea of drawing down the essence of Hashem. As we explained. Then what's the idea of chukim and mishpatim? Because what, so if the if the whole point is the essence of the Hashem, and we're talking about the superiority in a sense of edus over all the other ones, so then why do we have to have chukim and mishpat? And why are those categories necessary? Do them. So that's because you're, because it's being mamshachatim. So what's the point of of chukim and mishpatim? So the idea is because God wants it to be revealed. Since essence is beyond re- being revealed. So therefore, it's revealed through Chukim Mishpatim. Those are Giluim. Oyr, Oyr in Saf is, is Giluim, is a revelation of, of, of the essence. And there as well, you have Seivim and Mamala. And those reveal the essence of Hashem. What does this mean? What, what, what is, when you say Giluim, what does it mean, Giluim, that it's revealed? The idea of Giluim or revelation is that something is perceptible, is understandable, is comprehensible. So as we've explained, essence is not, is not subject, doesn't lend itself to being revealed. What does it mean it's not, that it can't be revealed? It's beyond understanding, comprehension. You can't, you can't, so you can't access it in any way. You can access it, meaning you can channel it, you can express it, you can experience it, but what does it mean that it's revealed? Revealed means that it's something that becomes know, knowable, perceptible to you. Something that resonates with you. That's Giloi. So, essence is not defies gilui, defies revelation in that in that context. So, how do you reveal it then? If God wants that it should be revealed, the essence. So that has to be through gilui. That has to be through sefer malad, which are two stages. Remember, we asked one of the questions we asked is doesn't seem to go in any kind of order. The pasuk says. What are the edus chukim mishpatim? So we asked if we understand the, the meaning of these categories. That edus is mitzvah. That I'm sorry. That mishpatim are mitzvahs that we understand. Edus are mitzvah. And then we would have known them had God not commanded us. We would have learned, you know, sneers. Let's say from uh, from from a cat. Edus are mitzvahs that we wouldn't have thought of on our own. But after God commands them, commands us, we do understand them. Like Shabbos. And chukim are mitzvahs we don't understand. So then what, what would the proper order be to, if you want to put them in, in a certain sequence? It would be either say, mishpatim edus chukim, or chukim edus mishpatim. Either from the non-rational to the rational, to the more rational, from the most rational to the, to the non-rational. But this order seems to be out of, it doesn't seem to be in any kind of sequence. Edus and chukim mishpatim. But now, we, based on what we said, we can understand the sequence. The betchilo in yina edus first, we're talking about the impact when a person does a mitzvah, what's happening here? The first thing is edus, which is hamshachas atmos, the drawing of the essence of Hashem. The achekach, and afterwards, since that's not enough just to draw the essence of Hashem, we want it to be revealed. So afterwards, bechdeisha hamshach diya begili for that to be revealed. While yidei hagili the eira seviv shenimshach yidei inin achokim shavimitzis. That happens through the eira seviv, the transcendent light of Hashem that is that comes through chukim. As we've explained at length before. And after that, so there's the idea of it being revealed or knowable. And as we said, we only can know it in the negative. So it's not something that can resonate with us. It's something we just know of. So that's the next step where Atmos, that's unknowable, becomes revealed. That's in Seviv. And then that comes down to for it to be resonant within us, for it to be able to, for us to be able to absorb it and appreciate it. That is all you day. That comes through mishpatim. So we see the three stages in every mitzvah, the three aspects within every single mitzvah, that it begins with edus. That the first thing is a yidah's a mitzvah, because that's the Abish's will. And when you do that, you're drawing atzmos, you're drawing the essence of Hashem. But it's not enough just to draw the essence of Hashem, to be mamshich, to draw the essence of Hashem, to access the essence of Hashem. God wants that to be revealed. What does it mean he wants it to be revealed? He means wants it to be known to us, that it should be knowable. Appreciated, and so that comes out also in two stages. First, through chukim, so that's why we have this order. First, eight is then chukim that we know it in the negative, in a sense, in the transcendent. We know what it isn't, 
And then as it becomes resonant, as it appeals to our sensibilities within our finite, limited, feeble minds, which is through Mishpat. But already here in chapter 7, we've, we've categorized, and this is going to be necessary as we keep going, um, in the next class, Mitzvah Hashem, we have two components here suddenly. There's the idea of Hamshachas Atmos, of drawing Atmos, and then there's the idea of Giloi Elikos, revealing godliness. There's the accessing of it, or the bringing it to this world, and then there's the revealing it in this world. They're two separate inyanim, two separate things, which the, they'll, they'll come out to, uh, to, we'll see how that relates to what we've been talking about already in the, in the beginning of the Mimer, and it'll start tying together all the answers to all the questions. So here we answer already the first question, one of the questions we asked, which is the order, the sequence of Eid Zuchok and Mishpat, and now that becomes uh, clear. And now to get into, we're going to start to understand the question of the Chachem, and the two versions of the question, we'll continue that in the next, um, in the next paragraph of chapter 7.